Here's a quick clarification of what's not true. Tesla is no longer focused on expanding its vehicle lineup. That's a false. Tesla is abandoning supercharging. False. Elon is threatening to move AI out of Tesla. Also false. Tesla is a one-man show and Elon is a part-time CEO. False and false. I guarantee you've heard those headlines propagating fear, uncertainty and doubt about Tesla and Elon Musk. There are indeed such hate-filled people in the world that they would rather take a big poo on the company that is doing the most to improve the world, rather than reflect upon their own personal shortcomings, that is. You know who you are. Get out of the way of progress, you miserable, misinformed maggots. With that out of the way, let's get into Tesla's 2024 annual shareholders meeting and all the wonderful news that brings. OK, here's the keynote for the event. Our impact is accelerating. Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. In 2023, our customers avoided releasing over 20 million metric tons of CO2 into the atmosphere by using our products. Bravo! Setting new standards for sustainable manufacturing. Water usage per vehicle produced down almost 25% since 2018, well below the industry average of 3.37 cubic metres. What say you protesters in Berlin? Is that good enough for you? And there's a staggering 35% less energy used per vehicle produced in Shanghai versus Fremont. Obviously, Shanghai being their most up-to-date factory. And 100% of Gigafactory Berlin's electricity usage matched with renewables. Our batteries are designed to outlast our vehicles. Model 3 and Model Y battery packs retain 85% of their capacity on average after 200,000 miles of driving. Absolutely remarkable. So my car, let's say, is just about here at 45,000. And I'd say that's pretty accurate too. But just look, once we get to 200,000 miles, they still easily retain over 80% of their original range. Incredible. Anyone who says that batteries don't last, take a look at this. Building the safest possible operations with our employees. Just a quick look at this chart shows the industry average of work-related injury rates uh, versus Tesla. We're making EVs affordable. Yes, they are. Total cost of ownership per mile. Here's a Model Y. Here's a BMW X3. Total cost of per mile. Clearly a lot more. We produce the most EVs globally in 2023. Tesla, of course, keeping their lead over BYD just about. But of course, it doesn't matter how much market share Tesla lose in the future. When Tesla started, they had practically 100% of the market share. Now with BYD and everyone else getting involved, Tesla are going to lose market share. This one little fact does occasionally seem to make the headlines and confuse people in thinking that Tesla are somehow losing. They are losing market share, but obviously as more electric vehicles are offered around the world, Tesla are going to lose market share. It's how many cars Tesla sell that is the important factor. And over 6 million vehicles have been produced all time. What an amazing achievement. Well done, everybody who works for Tesla. In 2023, we broke our yearly production record at Fremont. And over at Giga Texas, they made the impossible with Cybertruck. They also launched the upgraded Model 3, which is available globally starting at $299 per month or 216 after gas savings in the US. What utter ridiculous value that car is. It's so good. Really want one, but I can't get one just yet, but I will. In fact, here's one I want even more. The Performance Model 3. Absolutely ludicrous. And I'm test driving that in a few days. Can't wait. Anyway, Model Y became the best-selling vehicle globally. We know that. What an incredible achievement. I do believe that Elon even told everybody about two years ago, was it, that this would become the world's best-selling car. And lo and behold, Elon's prediction has come true. Marvellous. We're accelerating the fleet of electrification. Um, we'll get to the semi in a little bit when I talk through Elon's notes. But yep, the semi ramp up is about to begin. We still have a long way to go. Now, tell me, dear people, what are under these cloths? One of these would be a cyber cab or a Model 2, a van by the looks of it. But what's this one over here? That's the same as that one. So what's going on? Is, is that the cyber cab? That's the upcoming cheaper Model 2. That's a van. What's it doing over there? Why would not the van be over there? I, I'm a bit confused by this image, to be honest, but but I'm sure all will become clear in the end. Our supercharger network is growing, despite what you might have heard. Just look at this map, okay? This is a global map of all the superchargers, 58,000 of them. Anyone who says that Tesla is not in the lead with charging are obviously wrong. And everyone who thinks that by sacking a lot of the supercharger team, that all of a sudden this would just be absolute pandemonium, are incorrect as well. We just needed to wait to hear exactly what the outcome of that was going to be. They've rehired lots of folks. The supercharger network has not collapsed, has it? It's all fine. 
expanding charging access for all. Now, of course, Tesla are opening up their entire supercharger network to everyone else on the planet, all the other car manufacturers, who, let's face it, couldn't be bothered to make their own charging network, so have had to adopt and use Tesla's. Innovating battery manufacturing. Now, look, this is Tesla's lithium refinery. Okay, this is taking place in uh, Corpus Christi, I think it's pronounced. It'll be great seeing this up and running. No doubt this will absolutely obliterate the the manufacturing process of a lithium refinery because I, I guarantee that Tesla will just rewrite the rule book of how to do it. Let's see uh, how this goes. Can't wait. This year, we're on track to compete a record number of energy storage deployments. So more than 40 gigawatt hours of capacity between Lathrop Megafactory and Gigafactory in Nevada. So obviously, this graph lot is going up each time. So yes, they are clearly on track to becoming a massive, massive battery energy storage deployment mammoth in the industry. And this isn't going to stop. The energy business is going to be dwarfing the, the automobile business at some point. Most of the world has no idea what's going on about these batteries, but this is a massive part of Tesla's business, and it's wonderful to see everything's going the right direction, isn't it? Up. That's good. Okay, next. We generated record gross profit from energy in 2023. Indeed, up, up, and up. Look at that. Ramping mega pack volumes leading to ramping gross profit. Marvellous. Services and other gross profit reached what's that 500 million in 2023 as our fleet grows services and other gross profit is growing too good 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 marvelous tesla is way more than a car company for those who don't know tesla is not just a car company it makes all these other things as well very worth pausing the video having a look at this and trying to understand this and tesla's valuation as just a car company you know it's a bit more than a car company those who can't see it i'm baffled as to why they can't we're also the leaders in real world AI, another important factor for the finances, perhaps. So, yeah, auto bidder, Optimus, AI compute, full self driving, robo taxi, insurance. It goes on and on. There's there's so much involved in Tesla, which is why it's so damn exciting and why I'm trying to put the Tesla jigsaw pieces together here at Tesla Jigsaw. There's so many puzzle pieces to put together, and I'm clearly overexcited by the entire project. It's just fascinating. And if you don't think so, what's wrong with you? Tesla are no longer compute restrained. We're making necessary investments in AI compute infrastructure for our ambitious product roadmap. So look at the giant leap in investments into computing power in, in just in the past year. This is remarkable and I assume is only going to continue going up. FSD supervised version 12 wide release. So cannot wait to actually experience this for the first time myself. Um, having watched lots of other people do it in America. It, it, this is just mind boggling. Just watching other people take part in this also coming soon so here's the the tesla app which is what you'll be able to use to summon a robo taxi to your door or a cyber cab to your door and there's optimus again just wandering around the office as you do let's get more on him a little later lots more to say about him and then tesla belongs to you there we go the front doors of the tesla gigafactory in texas tesla's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy if you didn't know so with that out of the way, oh, by the way, welcome to my new studio. If you haven't seen my new blue, let's get into some of the notes I've taken from the shareholders meeting. Tesla board chair Robin Denholm made Denholm, Denholm, can't say a name, made passionate opening remarks about the shareholder vote. A reminder that we, the retail shareholders, are the owner of the company. Almost 50% of Tesla shareholders are in fact people like you and me. It's almost like those paying attention to Tesla know a good thing when they see it. So Robin ends with, the right things are always worth fighting for. And I salute you for that, Robin. Totally agree. Next came stockholder proposals. Approximately eight hours of this. National energy plan. And a great suggestion from Elon later on in the meeting, where he suggested people be word limited on future Tesla proposals. Yes, please. But most importantly, the highlight of the entire event, I suppose, were the votes in favour of James Murdoch and Kimball Musk maintaining positions on Tesla's board for a further three years. Marvellous. Tesla will now transfer state of incorporation from Delaware to Texas and set a precedent for other companies to follow, no doubt. Unless, of course, companies would rather an activist judge be able to overrule shareholders' votes and CEOs' fair compensation packages, that is. Ugh. Elon's comp package, quite rightly, and by a large majority, has been approved. Bravo for justice, and well done everyone for voting your shares. I'm not going to go into the whole Kathleen McCormick judge bit and the lawyers who wanted $5.2 billion in legal fees, because, you know, that's not over excessive, is it? Here's a short clip of what was played next as a reminder of the amazing work Tesla's done. The goal is to give people 
hope that there is a path to a fully sustainable global economy, that we are on that path, that we are accelerating that path, and that so long as we don't get complacent about it, it will happen. This was really the beginning of the end of the Tesla bubble. I actually think the company could go bust. Tesla's Model Y is the world's best-selling car, beating out Toyota's RAV4 and its Corolla models. Regarding FSD version 12, it's profound. The rate of improvement is rapid. It might be the biggest asset value appreciation in history when you can do unsupervised full self-driving. I mean, that just sounds like a story stock, uh, autonomous taxi. I mean, can you really balance your checkbook with, you know, sort of pie in the sky predictions like that? If you ask the wrong question, the right answer is impossible. My prediction is that a majority of Tesla's long-term value will be Optimus. And that prediction I'm very confident of. It's very rare a product comes along that is seemingly impossible that experts said would never be made. And this is one of those times. Finally, the future will look like the future. People say, like, why'd you make it bulletproof? I'm like, why not? <laughs> Energy storage deployments, the mega pack in particular, reached an all-time high in Q1, leading to record profitability for the energy business. This is the machine that builds the machine, and the factory is the product. And this building is the most advanced car factory that Earth has ever seen. If you value Tesla as an auto company, this is the wrong framework. If somebody doesn't believe Tesla is going to solve autonomy, I think they should not be an investor in the company. But we will. And we are. And then in comes Elon jumping and dancing on stage to a rather rapturous applause. I think I would be too, to be honest, if I'd just, uh, if I'd just got my compensation package agreed upon. How lovely. And his first words were, F them, I love you guys. And also de declared that he had the most awesome shareholder base. And I totally agree. What a wonderful community the retail Tesla shareholders are. And a massive sincere thanks to Alexandra Mertz, aka Tesla Boomer Mama, for rapid organisation skills in helping shareholders around the world vote. Bravo. And Sawyer Merritt and everyone else who got involved. Right, so some remarks that Elon said then. Not just starting a new chapter... They are starting a new book for Tesla. There's going to be a mind-blowing future. Autonomy is a massive part of it. His suggestion is you plot the curve of autonomy, how FSD is going, how many intervention-free miles we're seeing today and how many we saw this time last year and how many we're going to see in the future. And we can see the curve. His suggestion is believe the curve. Look at the evidence and the march of nines that's going to be taking place on how many miles you can go intervention free it's flipping wild and i can't wait the measuring metric will be how many miles how many days how many weeks or months can your car drive without you having to intervene i think it's pretty obvious where we're heading tesla can see the next two iterations of fsd versions they can see where these things are progressing and it's all looking pretty damn good Tesla will own some of the robo taxi fleet, but customers will also own some. You can add or subtract your car to the fleet, making money when you want, and highly confident that revenue generated for car owners will exceed car payments. How about that? And who wouldn't at that point? Isn't that insane? If the just <coughs> crazy. You can make more money from buying your car and the monthly payments. You'll make more money by popping out as a robo taxi half of the week or whatever. That will cover your payments for the car. Just linger on that for a moment. I've known this for a long time, but every time I think about it, it's kind of insane, isn't it? It, it is just going to be a matter of time at this point. Um, Elon admitted that he, he has an optimistic time frame for the scale of these sorts of things, but he also went on to say that if he wasn't this optimistic, then the factory he was stood in wouldn't exist. He agreed he's pathologically optimistic since birth, but he does deliver in the end. And that's the most important thing, isn't it? It's plenty of negativity about, oh, he's not got this out on time. Well, he's building the impossible. Give him some credit there. Things might be late, but they get there in the end. 
He also suggested to read ARK Invest Analysis for Potential for Autonomy, which is a video I'm going to do next. ARK Invest suggests it would be an $8.2 trillion company by 2029. That's roughly a 15x from where we are today, and that would put the share price at $2,600 per share. And today, a reminder, it's roughly $180. $180 to $2,600. That's, um, that's quite exciting, isn't it? And as the clock struck 20 past four, 420, um, he was just discussing how the, the company would 10x from here. It's a fun simulation we live in, isn't it? And things get way crazier when considering the humanoid robot. How many robots? Everyone in the world would want one, plus bots for industry. Industry building stuff, robots for home, robots for jobs. A two to one ratio, perhaps, of bots to humans. This is the crazy future we are staring down the barrel of. Um, Perhaps not the best analogy there. So if we're talking sort of how many bots um, Tesla could make, let's say they build 1 billion per year. Here's an example used here. So auto produces about 100 million vehicles per year. There could be roughly the same amount of, of robots necessary for the world, 100 million robots per year. So if Tesla could make a Tesla bot for $10,000, let's say, they can sell it for $20,000. That's a $10,000 profit. And they have a 10% market share of 100 million per year. That's $1 trillion profit per year, which equals a $20 trillion market cap alone, just for Optimus. <laughs> it's in the realm of possibilities that things start to look seriously insane. Once you model out and look into the future, of, uh, of Optimus humanoid robots. And I realise it still sounds insane, doesn't it? But it's flipping coming. Mark my words as well. I'm going to revisit this one day and look like I can see the future. Okay, next up was the keynote presentation from Elon. So he went through an awful lot of information. I'll try and just point out the, uh, the fun stuff or the interesting things, shall I? Tesla have hit a weekly production record of 1,300 Cybertrucks. Elon poses the question, how often do companies make products that move you? Cybertruck is just a super rare product and one that just doesn't come around often. Elon has just approved plans for volume production for Tesla Semi as well. So finally, the Tesla Semi is going to move the needle for all sorts of things. It's going to move the needle financially for Tesla. And the commercial viability is a no-brainer. Why would you not buy a Tesla Semi over a typical diesel truck if the costs to use it are so much higher? If you're saving hundreds of thousands of dollars per year with just one single truck, now imagine you've got a fleet of a hundred of them, a thousand of them. It's a matter of numbers, isn't it? Tesla semis are going to be a huge deal in the future, and especially now they're going to be ramping up production. Fantastic. And of course, that's going to have a massive effect on carbon emissions. The trucking industry is a massive, huge, filthy contributor to polluted air. He also touched on the rumours of the supercharger death, okay? But they will deploy more superchargers this year than the rest of the industry combined. Those that were just thinking that's the end for the superchargers then, no one's going to be able to use them, they'll just you know, rot in the ground. It's just ridiculous. Why don't people question themselves when they hear such things like that? I don't, I don't know. They're on track to spend about half a billion on supercharger deployment this year. They are also expanding the Tesla supercharger for all, which is better than having a walled garden, as he put it. So the very fact that Tesla are opening up their supercharger network to the rest of the automotive industry really shows Tesla's commitment to the whole mission in the first place, to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Does it not they could have kept it for themselves but they have chosen not to this is all really good news despite laying off a lot of the supercharger workers they have rehired some of them back again i think we need to not panic so much when we hear news like that in the future he also reiterated that all Cybertrucks use 4680 battery cells, okay, Tesla's own produced cell, and there is a clear path to becoming the most efficient cell in the future. But obviously, becoming a battery manufacturer at scale has been very difficult. I mean, you know, you give it a go. It's going to be hard, isn't it? But it does give Tesla resilience and independence in cell manufacturing. Yeah, but there's more important stuff to say about batteries in the Q&A in a minute. Energy deployment between 200 and 300% increase. The ramp up there is superb. They're ramping up the Powerwall 3. And in the future, there will be no substations for energy storage. So when they're putting in their mega pack facilities, you won't need a substation anymore. You'll just plug it in directly and that'll be it. That will be saving quite a lot of time and expense. That's a big deal right there. Tesla's internal software is probably better than all Fortune 500 companies. That's saying something, isn't it? 
He also mentioned that no one comes close to Tesla in regards to real world AI. Tesla have all the data. They have millions of robots driving around on the roads today collecting that video data for training. It's a million miles away from other car companies that are supposedly working on autonomous vehicles that don't have the data don't have the compute necessary, don't have the scalability of the correct hardware in their cars to gather the data in the first place. Yeah, it's it's going to be pretty interesting. He also breezily remarked that the hardware 5 is going to be 10 times more capable than hardware 4, which is five times better than hardware 3. Things are going to get pretty nuts as well in terms of capabilities with future hardware iterations. And of course, not only for cars, but they will be going into Optimus 2 in about 18 months. What's going to become apparent further down the road is the AWS type opportunity. The fact that cars, the Tesla cars are going to have uh, inference compute that can be used by Tesla to perform different tasks. This is a little bit beyond my basic brain's capabilities. But just as Amazon Web Services became the most valuable part of Amazon's business when they were just a bookstore selling stuff, um, no one is factoring this in for Tesla's computing power in the future. I'll leave it there. He also says that they are no longer compute restrained, something which is said you know, a little while ago now, but that was the limiting factor. They didn't have enough compute power, now they do. Where the miles between intervention is so large, it's hard to tell which version is better. He also went on to say that the people that are testing future iterations of, of FSD are driving for you know a week and the highlight of their week is when they get asked to intervene, is when intervention takes place. So just imagine that. People that are paid to just drive around autonomously all day long and once a week, something like that, they have to intervene. Can you see where this is going? Isn't this exciting? He also says that uh, they run FSD in shadow mode to see how well it performs. They analyze shadow mode to access billions of miles from its data engine. Autonomy cannot be solved unless you have millions of cars on the road collecting video training data. This is precisely why Tesla will win and why others will not. Tesla have millions of cars on the roads, covered in a camera suite, collecting the video data. The video data then gets analysed for millions of different variations of what could happen in one scenario. And it's it's the convergence of AI and, and the computing power and Tesla's software, Tesla's hardware, all coming together beautifully at the right time. This is the thing that's going to solve autonomy, which is what we've all been waiting for for so long, it seems. But I really do believe we're on the cusp of it now. We can see it, can't we? And we know people are driving around intervention-free for hours at a time. It's just a matter of scaling this now. But at some point, a simple software update will suddenly allow tens of millions of cars to become fully autonomous, mine included. Then he has a good discussion on Optimus, so massive progress. We've got two robots doing useful tasks in factories today. A few are cruising around the Palo Alto factory, just wandering around, it seems. They're looking to have a limited production for use in Tesla factories by early next year. So hopefully over a thousand plus working at Tesla. They will scale rapidly from there. But future iterations of this, you will be able to talk to it. You'll be able to show it what to do. You could even ask it to watch a video to learn how to do a task. Tesla are by far the leaders in the field. They have the motors, the gearbox, the electronics. Um, there is no supply chain for what was needed for humanoid robots. Tesla have had to build everything themselves. So even from the hands, they currently have about 11 degrees of freedom to do that. But the next version is going to have 22 degrees of freedom, which will be enough to play a piano. They have the world's best electronics and mechanical engineers. They have power efficient inference computes. They have real world AI. They have a very strong hand of cards is what Elon was trying to say. Plus scaling manufacturing. Tesla, of course, are one of the world's best manufacturers of anything. They can ramp up scale. They can iterate and improve whilst the product line is, is being manufactured. The, the rapid innovation and speed that Tesla can manufacture is just second to none. And of course, a reminder to other robotics companies and car companies for that fact, prototypes are easy, production is hard. That's the key thing to get over, production, of which Tesla has the scalability for hardware and the software and everything else. So Optimus is on a path to a $25 trillion market cap. That's a big number, isn't it? Um, there's immense work to be done, but they are moving fast and they will make it happen.
Next, we're into the Q&A section. Just a few things to, to briefly mention. But the first chap said, history will not forget the sacrifices you made directly to Elon's face. I thought that was pretty nice. And uh, and highlighted the First Amendment freedom of speech and the importance of that for future civilization. The supercharger network for the third year running is fully powered by 100% renewable energy. Oh, Elon also remarked, there's been two homicidal maniacs in the past seven months alone that have tried to kill him. He did say he will endeavour to try and stay alive, but did mention John Lennon and the fact that John Lennon was just trying to spread uh, you know, peace and love to the world and, and he was shot by one of his fans. So, um, you know, Elon does have a bit of a target all over him, doesn't he? From people who just don't pay attention or understand. <sighs> what can do? Yeah, hopefully he's, he's maxed out his security um, and is not to be messed with. He also wanted to talk about the HVAC systems, which we've heard about many times before, but it doesn't sound like that's going to be coming anytime soon. There's a long list of things to do, and that's not high priority. Bit of a shame because that is an important factor for the future, but hopefully other companies worldwide around the globe will be able to step up and produce HVAC systems. And then a question came up about Donald Trump being a big fan of Tesla and you, who was asked, what did you tell him? And Elon says he doesn't know. Trump calls Elon on occasion, apparently, and is very nice. And they do discuss um, electric cars being very good and the fact that they are made in America. Lots of Trump's friends have Teslas and he loves Cybertrucks, apparently. That's nice, isn't it? At least he's getting a little interest from a uh, former president of the United States rather than the uh, the current chap who doesn't seem to give a monkeys about Tesla. Anyway, Elon was then asked what's going to happen in the future when, you know, there does need to be an intervention in a Tesla when they are fully autonomous and you don't have a steering wheel. And he guessed there would be some, uh, you know, some scenarios where you'd have to have remote steering interventions. OK, that makes sense. He was also asked about scaling 4680 battery cells beyond the Cybertruck. But um, as he did clarify, other battery manufacturers around the world have had battery orders cancelled from the likes of GM and Ford and a few other car companies. So there are plenty of batteries and they are cheaper for Tesla to buy than they are to make their own. This was my bit of a you know epiphany moment. Was it a year ago, six months ago, when Elon said we are no longer battery constrained? That to me was like, well, the pressure's off for making 4680s then. I don't know why some people seem to struggle with that. Um, the 4680 cell, of course, and Tesla's investment into batteries is a great strategy for the future. But right now, it's perhaps unnecessary. So at the end of the day, if the 4680 cell costs more than suppliers can provide them for, why? Why would you use 4680s if you can get them cheap, cheaper elsewhere? But they do expect to achieve cost parity by the end of the year. So there is that. Cybertruck, internationally, that was a question asked. Why have you just sent the Cybertruck around the world and are you going to make efforts to actually make it available to people? So they might be able to certify for markets next year. Not quite sure where he's talking about. I don't think that will be a UK market, but they would need to recertify the car to be compliant in other markets. It's clearly designed for a North American market and they need to make a special version for China and Europe. So there's lots of work to do first, though. There's mega pain to chisel the pennies away from production. The cost grind needs to take place first. But there would be plenty of demand around the world, according to Elon. I would agree with that, too. I think it's the most interesting vehicle on planet Earth. He also said that the Foundation series is about to come to the end, so there will be a lowering of price, and uh, I think $80,000 will be the, the new starting price for a Cybertruck. Elon also remarked that we are heading into a wild future. We will have autonomous cars. We will have customizable companion robots. It's going to get pretty weird, people, isn't it? Um, but he was also asked, what happens if Elon is not part of, uh, of um, Tesla's future and and you know, if something was to happen. Elon suggested he is a helpful accelerant. He is most useful for scaling the speed of progress behind his companies. It's pretty obvious that at this stage, Tesla, SpaceX, all of Elon's companies would live on. They just might not scale up quite so quickly. So what an exciting, inspiring future we've got to look forward to. Um, I hope this video has been vaguely interesting. It's been a lot to go through, hasn't it? But, you know, let me know what you think in the comments below. There's so much to digest and talk about. But I, for one, am massively relieved that Tesla is incorporating itself in Texas and that Elon's compensation plan is uh, has been approved. And the next one can get underway. They can write a new one now, can't they? Whew, I don't know what that's going to say. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to my Patreons for your amazing support. If you want to help me too, you can join my Patreons over on my page for like a few dollars a month or something. 
And for that, I'll give you some extra content and you'll just give me the support to keep going on my crazy YouTube journey and try and make it um, a career of sorts. So uh, thanks so much if you do choose to. M massively appreciated. I'm Will. This is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.